Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Today I'm doing something that might border on being silly. Uh, my McAllister's here, my Fifth Avenue's, uh, and my Sanford's, one thing they all have in common is I put insoles, these leather insoles into them, okay? Um, and the thing about these insoles is, although it's not that easy to see, this is imprinted, it covers up the logo, okay, when you put these in. And you can see here in the Fifth Avenue's different style logo because these were made in like 1988-89, okay? And there you can see that uh, older Allen Edmonds logo in there. And obviously when you put these in, it covers them up. And the same thing on the McAllister. So what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to, if you can see it here, right? It's printed in reverse, okay? With transfer iron-on paper, I'm going to attempt to iron the logo back onto here, right? I have no idea if this is going to work or not, so let's go. Everybody's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. It's got a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is, though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. They're both done. Doesn't it look awesome? Okay, these are my McAllister's, and you can see the logo there. There's the 1922 badge um, right about there. And it says below that here, Allen Edmonds, in that kind of Times New Roman font. Below that it says, handcrafted in USA of fine imported materials. And then it has the, uh, you know, the, the McAllister below that, right? So basically, obviously it has to be backwards because when you iron this on, okay? When you, when you iron this on, obviously, you know, it gets transferred in the reverse side, okay? So I don't know if you can tell in the light, but that's what kind of what it's gonna look like. Um, there's very, very specific directions on the iron-on transfer uh, sheets. And this I'm going to put right about here. Oh, it goes this way, actually. Its uh, orientation is this way. Um, I'm not going to put it right here because I want to put it similar position um, as on the actual shoe. I'm actually just going to move it slightly down that way a little bit so it has to keep it off of the area where the heel directly puts pressure on. And per the directions, you turn the heat up to um, close to the highest, it says highest cotton setting. And uh, that's kind of warming up there. I'm using a hard table. It says don't do it on a piece of glass. The directions on the transfer paperwork uh, say don't do it on an ironing board because apparently you have to put a lot of pressure to get this to transfer. I've already tried it once. Actually, I've already tried it twice. This is my third time. It worked very well on my daughter's t-shirt. But uh, the leather here is much more difficult to get it to stick to. Um, I've also got a piece of parchment paper. This is not wax paper. This is parchment paper. Parchment paper is like a cooking item. And because when I didn't do this, um, you can see here I kind of ruined one. Those dots there are kind of the dots from the bottom of the iron, okay? So um, I'm using the parchment paper to kind of protect the leather because this is obviously very cheap, cheap leather. You know, these are just $9 pair of insoles I got from Amazon or something. The, the parchment paper protects the leather from the iron. So I'm going to try this one more time. And uh, it's, uh, the last time I did about 45 seconds, it wasn't quite enough to get it to really heat on there and melt. Okay, so I'm going to go for about a minute. And you're pressing down really hard. You're putting your body weight on it. And now I'm gonna let that cool off for a minute or two. You can, I don't know if you can tell there, right there, some leather actually did transfer, but not enough to damage it. I'm gonna let that cool off. Okay, so now it's had a few minutes to cool off and here comes a moment of truth. Let's see if I can peel this off. You gotta grab a corner. Stuck. Oh no, I can see an air pocket already. Ah, nope, fail. <laughs> a little bit of a fail, I don't know. McAllister, it's a little, you definitely can't read the small writing, the big writing you can. And you can see it's not adhered there. Okay, so I'm gonna try and iron this back down a little bit better.
Oh, fail. Yeah, that was really a failure. Now it's melted. Yeah. Now here's the first one that I ruined. Um, you can see those dots are actually the dots from the iron. Um, you can see the texture is kind of ruined, but I also cut it because, you know, I'll show you why later. But so I guess at this point, I think I'm practicing. So let me just give this a shot. That wasn't bad for eyeballing, was it? Oh, I see what's going on. I see exactly what's going on now. It is moving. It melts and moves. I get it. So I can tell you right now, this one's going to be smeared because I saw it move. Yep, and look at that. See, it's all smeared because it moved. Okay, this one. You can see in this shoe it goes a different direction. Try less heat, less time. Gotta let that cool. Has not adhered. Partially adhered. Lining them up. So next I've got an X-Acto knife. And this uh, knife, I don't even know what you call it, but I got it um, for Christmas. My wife got it for me from eBay. It was, it was like 35 bucks and it's got all these, you know, leather working tools in it that I basically have no idea how to use. Like, for example, this is for punching holes. You see, punch five holes in a row, then you move it down, and that's how you can get a series of holes that are perfectly in line. But anyway, so this is an old uh, kitchen cutting board that my wife was getting rid of, so I confiscated it. And this works well for, you know, for doing stuff like this. So the objective here is to thin the leather down, right? It's called skiving, to thin the leather down. By the way, the reason that I cut the insoles in half there was because um, if you've watched my Alan Edmonds McAllister's review video, uh, the part of the shoe where it cuts under the ankle bone is cut a little bit too high and it just barely rubs a little bit on my ankle bone. I'm not talking about walking around an office. I'm talking about I will wear these shoes and go 10, 15,000 steps in a day, which is several miles of walking on a regular basis. And um, just that extra little bit of thickness from the insole raises it up enough where it makes it perfectly comfortable. But I don't want that extra thickness in the front of the shoe because it makes my toes rub at the front, if that kind of makes sense. Come on. 
吗？It's been a few minutes and it's still pretty warm to the touch. Hey, that one's actually decent. Huh. Clean this one off. I'm gonna try it one more time. This is the first one. Okay, 
seems like once it's cool enough where you can rest your hand on it comfortably, you know, then it's okay to uh, peel off. I remember my, from my days at Taco Bell, I think over one, I forget the exact number, but like 130, 140 degrees is enough to burn you. So if you can comfortably place your hand on it, it's obviously under that, which obviously means that's the, under the melting temperature. Ah. Huh, look at that. That smudge over there was from the previous sticker. That is not bad, huh? <laughs> okay guys, let me show you a couple of these cool little leather working tools that are in this kit. See this? Right? For punching holes. And this uh, row, you know, there's ones with just one, you know, two, four. So what it does is it lets you make a series of holes like if you are going to stitch through thick leather, right? So I can line that up with that. I think you're supposed to back it with leather. I'm just using cardboard. See? Line that up with that. Isn't that pretty cool? Right? Then you can stitch through thick leather. And, um, and there's a, another little tool here that I was experimenting with. And this thing's pretty neat. See this? Can you see that? That tip? Now, do you see this mechanism in here, right? When you push, it in essence rotates, right? So it twists automatically. So I'm gonna put some holes around this to try to distract from the fact that I screwed this up so bad, you know? So I guess I'll just start. I can always add more, but I'll just start right here. I'm just gonna eyeball it, okay? I'm gonna take away the cardboard. Oops. Look at that. See that? It comes out. And I'm guessing this needs to be tightened in. I'm just going to eyeball them. Okay, so here's what I use to actually create the transfer. So this I got from Walmart, uh, Fabrics Transfers. Um, is that the Spanish? Anyway, uh, Fabric Transfers, there's 15 sheets. I think it was like $9.88. And they come with 10 for white, 5 for dark. I believe the dark ones have a white background, where the ones for white fabric have a clear background. And then, you can see here, by the way, it worked beautifully on my daughter's shirt, right? There's one flaw, I think, over here, but anyway, um, it worked beautifully. So in the fabric, you just follow the directions, and this is our very first shot. It works great. Then what I did was I went on the interwebs here, and I was looking for Alan Edmonds logos, and then I created, uh, downloading the Alan Edmonds logos, um, I created this you know, Word document, and I kind of just plopped them in here. So this would be the 2018 and up logo here. I put them in various sizes, and then you would see here's how I created the McAllister. So I this part of the logo, the 1922 Allen Edmonds, um, was downloaded, uh, handcrafted in USA, a fine imported leather. I put that in myself. McAllister, I put that in myself. Had to create the proper font, had to create the proper... Uh, you know, italics, um, not italics, but the proper font, I'm sorry, and then the proper letter and text size and McAllister, I think is Times New Roman, handcrafted in USA, I think is Arial Narrow. Um, here you can see the 
um, older logo, the 1989 and earlier logo. Um, and I think I created that whole thing just from text. I think the Alan Edmonds is Times New Roman. Um, handcrafted World of and then Made in USA. You know, just looked at the shoe and copied it. Fifth Avenue. Um, and then here is just uh, another logo that I found online. And then, but because when you iron on, it has to be backwards, okay? So what I did was I took screenshots of those and then I just basically reversed them. So these are just basically pictures, right? So I did a print screen, then dumped it on here. And then in um, Word here, then you can go to, where was it? I believe um, when you click on one of these pictures, um, where was it? It was somewhere in here. Oh, picture tools, format. And then you go over here to the right side and it was um, one of these over here. I forget exactly where it was rotate this was it um rotate then you can flip horizontal and then that lets you reverse it okay so you have to print it backwards to get an iron on okay so that's how i did that part um and then uh you know basically just printed that out and uh use the proper settings on the printer i think i had to pick other uh, it, I don't think it really matters, to be quite frank, but I used the other format, uh, I mean, like other paper, you know, and then use the highest quality setting, okay? Okay, there's uh, another one done. And I'll show you why I got the idea for that. These are my Allen Edmonds Shreve ports, and you can see they come that way. And if you notice, look, <laughs> they're more uh, cattywampus than mine are, you know, so anyway... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, a little bit of a fail, partial success. Uh, really what it comes down to is if you can get the formula right, and uh, with the formula, I mean the heat, the pressure, and the time you press it on, and when you lift off the parchment paper. I know this can be successful, but I'm out of time. Um, I'm out of patience and I'm out of insoles. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you gave you a little bit of entertainment. Um, I don't know if anybody else is going to try this. If you do, you know, let me know what your results are, okay? All right, thank you very much for watching.